Hello, friends of well-groomed lawns. I warmly welcome you to this new robotic lawnmower review. And today we have in front of us the latest mower from Works, the 2.0 edition, the WR167E. This lawnmower is also known as the Landroid 2.0. But how good is it really, and what does it have to offer? That's what we'll be taking a look at together in this video. So, let's not waste any time. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel for free and activate the bell to never miss a video. You can find the current prices as always in the video description below. Thank you for your support and let's get started. Finally, the time has come. Works is launching the next generation of its lawnmowers, the Landroid 2.0. In front of us is the WR167E, which is the model for up to 700 square meters. Clearly, there are different variants depending on the size of your lawn at home. I've been waiting for this new lawnmower for some time now, and I'm very excited to see what it has to offer. I'm sure you are too, so let's get started with the unboxing. From the product box alone, you might think you have the old version in front of you. But upon closer inspection, you can see that it's actually the new mower, as indicated by the small picture with the specifications on top. Otherwise, everything is the same, but it's the inner workings that matter. Directly from the box, we get the templates for the corners where the mower should go. This is the Old Works Lawn Mower, the previous version which I've already introduced in detail before. If you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out as I'll link it in the top right corner of the screen. As I mentioned, there are also the usual templates for laying the boundary wire. Basically, this is very simple and I've already made a separate video about it. A little deeper in the box, we find the actual lawnmower with accessories. There's definitely a lot that comes with it, starting at the top with the typical paperwork, including some advertising, safety instructions, and the user manual. So, there's a user manual for laying the boundary wire and a user manual for the lawnmower itself. Next, we have the actual sleek lawnmower, the WR167E, protected by bubble wrap. Very important is also the charging station, which is located at the bottom. On the right side, we have the corresponding power supply and a roll of boundary wire. Additionally, we find a nice package of ground spikes on the side so we can sink the boundary wire into the ground. There are a total of 210 pieces, and in case that's not enough for you, you can of course buy the boundary wire and ground spikes as accessories. But don't worry, these items should be sufficient for the specified area. In a small press seal bag, we have the screws for anchoring the charging station to the ground. And finally, two connectors in case you accidentally cut the boundary wire, which has happened to me before, or if you want to extend it. And last but not least, which I find very practical by the way, there's a small bag with knives and screws, containing a total of 9 pieces. What else is there? Well, the lawnmower robot obviously needs to be powered during operation. Therefore, there's a 20 volt battery with a total of 4 ampere hours. That's definitely not bad. The previous model only came with a small battery for 500 square meters. As you can see, there's quite a bit included here, which is completely sufficient to start using the lawnmower robot right away. Let's take a closer look at the Works Landroid 2.0. This is the new Works Landroid 2.0 here on the left side. Both lawnmower robots certainly look similar, but the devil is in the details, as they say. The new version has definitely received a number of new features. I'll also link to the comparison video of these two lawnmower robots up here on the info card. However, this is about the new lawnmower robot, and I would say it looks very similar on the outside. However, there are already small but fine differences, especially here at the battery compartment, at the height adjustment, and also here at the display. The robot gives a very high quality and qualitative impression, which is also reflected in the construction. A nice sturdy plastic chassis on the outside. The lawnmower robot weighs a total of 10 kilograms. It feels like something high quality, but that's what we've come to expect from works. Here at the battery compartment, 
there's already the first innovation. No longer, as before, this large flap at the rear, but the small, simple one with the small orange switch. Just press it and the flap opens. There's not necessarily much to see at the battery compartment itself. We only have the compartment for the 20 volt battery here. Works includes a 4 ampere hour battery with this version, but you can use any capacity you want. For example, this 5 ampere hour battery depending on how long you want your Landroid to run in the end. However, since we have a deeper battery compartment for the new lawnmower robots, it must be ensured that no water gets in here. Therefore, the rubber seal can be seen in white around it. Make sure that's always nice and clean. And also, very important, this little pin in the corner, the Landroid really notices whether the flap is closed or not. This means that if the flap is just resting and not properly closed, the Landroid will definitely not start. Otherwise, we only have a USB port down here. This is definitely not for charging your smartphone, but I suspect it's for reading and updating the lawnmower robot. So, insert the battery and close the flap, and the lawnmower robot is ready to use. The great thing is that you need your 20 volt max batteries from Works for the Works Landroid. So, if you put the lawnmower robot out of commission at the end of autumn, you can easily use the batteries for your other works devices. Right next to it is the typical rain sensor. It would be silly if the lawnmower robot starts mowing when the grass is still wet. That's why you can set a delay here, for example, 4 hours. Otherwise, at the back of the machine, you'll only find the two large wheels that drive the Landroid. From the side, you can see the extreme profile of the Landroid's wheels. They really have an incredible grip, and it's worth mentioning that they have a diameter of 200 millimeters. If you don't like the wheels, you can get a different set for the Landroid, such as this one. Since there's nothing else to see at the back, let's move to the front and take a look at the controls. Starting with the large red stop button, which is also present in the previous model. If something happens with the mower, or if you just want to stop it, this is the button to press. Right next to it is the cutting depth adjustment, which you can adjust using this rotary dial. You can see that you can set the cutting height to 30, 40, 50, or 60 millimeters. What's special and also visible from the side is that no matter what height you set, the dial always stays at the same level. This wasn't the case with the previous model. Let's stay on this side for a moment and take a look at the cut to edge function, which is also present in the previous model. I'll talk more about this later when we look at the mower from underneath. And above it are the distinctive charging contacts of the mower, which make up the side charge function. This means that the mower drives forward into the charging station and then backward out of it. Some people have asked whether this process can be changed. The answer is no. What else is there to see? I'll point out the cover at the front and this slot for the ACS module. It's worth mentioning that the ACS module is an optional extra and doesn't come as standard with the Landroid. In my opinion, it's definitely worth getting as it prevents your Landroid from having accidents. If you haven't seen the video about the additional modules, be sure to check it out. You can find the videos in my channel. So far, so good. We'll take a closer look at the remaining buttons and the entire menu later. There's a lot to say about them. For now, let's focus on the underside of the Landroid. The view from below looks very familiar. At the front, you can see the large pulley that allows the Landroid to rotate 360 degrees on the spot. You can also see the slots for the additional modules such as Find My Landroid, Voice Control, and Off Limits at the front. I'll say it again, these additional modules are very useful. If we take a closer look at the Off Limits module, we can see that these modules won't be directly compatible with the previous mower. For example, the Off Limits module was much narrower. I can't say for sure about the other modules yet. Furthermore, it can be seen here that the entire mowing deck, including the knife plate and the three-bladed knife disc, are located nicely to the side. As mentioned earlier, there are also nine additional blades included in the delivery. This means that you can restock the Landroid three more times. Also worth mentioning is the cut to edge function, which is only possible because the knife disc is nicely located to the side. As we know, most lawn robots have the knife disc approximately in the middle, meaning there's a 10 centimeter gap on either side where the robot cannot reach and therefore cannot mow. 
But looking at the works, the knives are really nicely located to the side with only two, maybe one and a half centimeters of space where the robot can't mow. This means it can almost mow right along the edge. This is not really a unique feature as the previous lawn robot also had this feature. However, what is new is the floating mower deck. Some may wonder what this is, so let me briefly show you. You can see that the mowing deck is mounted with springs, so it floats, so to speak. And this feature has a certain advantage. The mowing deck automatically adapts to uneven terrain. This means that on hills or in holes, we'll not have grass that's been cut too high or too short because the mowing deck adjusts automatically. In any case, this is not a bad feature and the previous lawn robot did not have it. Another piece of information that should not be missed at this point is that the Landroid Lawn Robot is also IPX5 certified, which means it's splash proof. You can clean it directly with a water hose and it will not be damaged. It's worth mentioning, however, not to hold the full jet of water on it, but it's definitely splash proof. Since there's not much more to see here, let's switch to the top and take a look at the remaining controls. Here we find, of course, the on-off button of the Landroid, as before, then a return button, a home button, start, the large display, and finally the selection wheel. This is also a new addition, and in my opinion, it moves nicely, but now we want to start the lawn robot. To do this, I hold down the on-off button for a few seconds, and the lawn robot activates automatically. Next, the pen code is requested as standard, because of course, the lawn robot is also theft-proof. By default, the pen code is set to 0000. With its input, we've unlocked the lawn robot. And as you can see, the display definitely provides much more output. We have the current date in the upper left, then the time and the battery level. In this context, it's noticeable that the display automatically dims when it's not used for a while. The wheel in the middle is definitely the multifunction button. This means I can navigate through the entire menu with this wheel. Turning it slightly to the right, the lawnmower immediately displays three symbols. First, the gear wheel for the settings, then the clock, and finally, the lock symbol to change the pin code of the lawnmower. Pressing the corresponding button will take us directly to the submenu where we can make all adjustments to the Landroid. It would be advantageous to start with the first option, language, so that we can set all the options in the appropriate language. Now, let's go through the submenu options. First is language, then time format, date format, where we can set the date and time, start time in case of rain, i.e. rain delay, app link for the connection to your app, in this case, the Landroid app. Under the clock symbol, you can set all the mowing related options, such as automatic working hours, adjusting new mowing zones, and set them up. In my opinion, it's much easier to adjust these settings in the Landroid app. Last but not least, under option 3, we can change the pen code accordingly. As you can see, the entire Landroid and its settings are quite complex, but with the app, it's easy to manage. Now, let's start by laying the boundary wire for the lawnmower, and then we can take a closer look at it. So, the boundary wire is laid, and we need to focus on the charging station, which emits different frequencies for both lawnmowers. Therefore, if you already had the first charging station, you need to swap it with the new one. Otherwise, both charging stations are identical. The lawnmower drives in laterally, and there's a cable directly connected to the charging station. The cable is 10 meters long, which is sufficient in my opinion. Finally, the power supply is IP67 certified, which means it's protected against water. It adds about 1 meter to the length. If this is not enough, an extension cord can be used. I'll connect the power supply and put the lawnmower in the charging station to fully charge it. After that, we'll focus on setting up and testing the lawnmower. When all of this is checked off and the LED on the charging station is green, it means the boundary wire is completely closed and we can activate the lawnmower robot for the first time. So, we hold down the on-off button for a few seconds, which automatically activates the lawnmower robot. It'll probably still complain because we still need to connect it to the Landroid app. There are two ways to do this step. It's possible to scan the lawnmower robot via QR code, or the second option is to manually enter the code. At this point, some may wonder what QR code to scan and where it's located. 
It's located as a sticker underneath the battery protection cover. The actual process of adding a Landroid using the Landroid app is quite simple. So I simply go into the app, then click on these three lines in the upper left corner. Then click on My Landroids and can then add another one under the existing Landroid. Then I'm asked, can the app access my camera here? Clearly, if I want to scan a QR code, I must allow the app to access my camera, so I grant access. Now we can scan the QR code. After I've scanned the Landroid, I'm asked how I want to connect it. The options are Find My Landroid or Radio Link, which are the additional modules. In most cases, the connection will be via Wi-Fi, so I choose the appropriate function, Wi-Fi, and then enter my home network. And then you just need to follow the steps shown in the app, and your Android is connected to the Landroid app. As you can see in the app, the new Landroid 2.0, as I've named it, has been detected by the app and is ready to use. It's also evident that the off-limits module is already mounted in the lawnmower robot. The lawnmower robot is now fully operational. It still complains that it's outside the boundary wire, but I would say we can now start the actual test. Let's now focus on the behavior of the Landroid in practice. Before we proceed, let me say that the lawnmower robot has been running for a few weeks now, so I have a good idea of how it works. Let's start with the interface and operation. As we saw earlier, the lawnmower robot has relatively few buttons or keys, making it self-explanatory. The most important information is displayed on the large screen. The second way to operate and control the lawnmower robot is, of course, the Landroid app. I would definitely recommend this to everyone for operation since there are additional settings available and the app is generally very user-friendly. For example, you're immediately informed as soon as the Landroid realizes that it's starting to rain and moves back to the charging station. Additionally, the lawnmower robot starts automatically according to the set times, follows its schedule, and then returns to the charging station. As indicated by Works, the new mower robot is now also smart, meaning it learns your lawn area better and better over time. Of course, it's quite difficult to verify such a feature. This means that I can't track the movement of a mower robot for several weeks and then check if anything has changed. Overall, it seems to me that the new mower robot is somewhat more effective at cutting than the previous version. On the lawn area to be mowed, I could only find relatively few spots where the blades were slightly longer. The floating mower deck also works quite well, which in my opinion is a very practical innovation. This allows the mower robot to compensate for unevenness in your lawn area. If you want to know more about this, it's best to check out the animation on the works website. There, the mower robot is shown from the side while compensating for unevenness. I'll put the link in the video description for you. Let's move on to the actual cutting of the mower robot. It's worth noting that the blades are brand new, ensuring a very clean cut in the grass. This means no frayed ends or anything like that, just a nice juicy cut. Of course, to maintain this, you need to regularly replace the blades, which are not too expensive either. I'll also put a few options for you in the info box below. Similar to the previous version, the cut to edge function is available. This means that the mower robot mows relatively close to the edge and leaves less standing grass compared to conventional mower robots. What else is there to say? Clearly, the additional modules are worth mentioning. The Works Landroid is modular and can therefore be adapted to different situations using additional modules. For example, the ACS, Find My Landroid, Off Limits, etc. ensure that the Landroid avoids almost any object. I've also presented these modules in detail on my channel. In summary, it's a highly recommended mower robot with good innovations. Whether an upgrade is worth it depends on everyone's individual needs, but I would definitely recommend the 2.0 as a new investment. That's all for this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel now and activate the bell to not miss any videos. You can find the latest prices in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support. And with that, see you next time. Bye.